Hello, uh, this is a talk about OXML and PDF digital signing in Drew and elsewhere. Uh, this uh, talk is meant to be uh, focused on X509 certificates, creating signatures using that and verifying those signatures. Uh, so I won't really be talking about all this GPG based signing, which is a different uh, piece. Uh, regarding me, uh, perhaps I'm already familiar uh, to many of you. I'm Miklos Reina from Hungary. I'm a bit collaborator for many years now. Um, I started here as a GSOC student around the writer RTF import and export. And um, uh, nowadays I mostly do things around writer. So let's uh, start with an overview on um, regarding um, what uh, is uh, what was already available as digital signing as a feature set in OpenOffice org and how we um, uh, developed new and new features uh, on top of that and um, then I don't we uh, reach uh, what's new this year. So the, the digital signing we, ne we um, had in OpenOffice org times was uh, just uh, uh, limited to ODF signing. Um, we literally had um, hard-coded uh, conditions in the code saying in case it's not in ODF then it's impossible to digitally sign something um, and um, when it comes to signing um, you always have to decide what's the hashing algorithm you use um, to create some um, digest from your the original content and then you actually sign that digest. So for digesting only this order MD5 and SHA1 was supported, not the newer SHA256 uh, or anything better. And also just RSA was um, um, supported, so the newer ECDSA or anything else was not supported. Um, regarding the verification, and the process is somewhat straightforward, so it can do um, checking if the digest is matching, which means in case you modified the document as an attacker, then that you, we will have a different digest compared to what was signed and we can do detect that the document is modified. It can also do certificate validation see that um, we have some trusted uh, root certificates and there should be a chain from the trusted root certificate to your certificate and in case there is no such chain then uh, that also fails the validation um, it's also an interesting attack that you can uh, append some uh, new streams in the zip package or basically put um, put data before or after the signed content uh, so we also check for that and yeah, as mentioned, this is all uh, done uh, via X509 uh, certificate, so not uh, no GPG, that was added later. Uh, the first thing I added uh, four years ago um, was um, OXML signing, uh, which is so basically digital signing for DOCX, XLSX and PPTX formats um, to improve the interoff with Microsoft Office. Um, this is somewhat similar to ODF signing because um, it is building on this W3C um, specification, the XML, XML digital signing core specification, and ODF does the same. So at the very bottom layer, uh, we are just signing a piece of XML fragment, and how we do that is actually the same for OXML and ODF. Uh, one interesting part here for you as a user is that um, um, we never sign metadata for um, OXML files. Uh, this is probably because Microsoft wants to upload the files to SharePoint and read the metadata there or something like that. Uh, so if you open the files in uh, LibreOffice, then the LibreOffice um, standards is that um, metadata should be part of the signature. So um, actually, OXML signatures won't be uh, ever recognized as perfect. Um, the best level you can reach is that um, you have a partial signature. Um, it's important that uh, we are meant to read what uh, Microsoft Office writes um, and also we should produce something that they can read. 
Um, what's somewhat interesting is that um, um, there are these different transform algorithms in um, in the XML XMLD uh, SIG spec, and um, compared to ODF, there is a special one in the in the OXML spec. There is a custom algorithm, and um, we offload most of this signing XML signing work to uh, the XML SAC library, and that has a hard coded set of transforms that it's supporting. So I had to go to the XMSAC library at support for this relationships transform algorithm, algorithm because that influences like what's the input data that will be used for hashing. And once this was contributed upstream, then we could um, use, the, uh, use it for OXML signing purposes. Um, Sadly, the OXM assigning markup is a bit awful. Um, one interesting piece is that um, it uh, leaks um, quite uh, some of your software and hardware details, like you are supposed to write your Windows version, Office version, um, Microsoft Office version, how many monitors you have, what resolution your monitor has, and so on and so on. And it's a very interesting question. What's your Windows version if you use LibreOffice on the Mac or on Linux? So we have some hard coded stuff there so that we please what Microsoft Office requires there, but it's not really uh, leaking your data. <coughs> the next step was that um, um, PDF export uh, has an optional um, way to create a signature during the creation of the PDF file itself. This was um, initially done as a GSOC project and then uh, Tor Lilquist um, completed this. And um, because we had some customer who wanted um, to drive this to completion. And uh, what we do there is basically we do the PDF export, we write placeholder for the signature, and then we do the st standard binary signing using X509 uh, certificates, this PKCS uh, 7 uh, spec that defines how to do a binary signature on the, on the hash of this original content. And then we do a hex dump of this uh, signature and put it to the placeholder inside the PDF file. And what's not used from the PDF um, placeholder is just um, uh, filled up with padding. So this is um, for new PDF files and uh, for signal signatures. Then um, we wanted to improve this so that we can also verify those signatures and this requires quite uh, like digging into quite some layers. So first I wanted to um, understand uh, what um, existing parsers, PDF parsers we have in LibreOffice because of course we had multiple ones. So at that time we had three. Uh, Poplar is used um, to have some editable ODG file out of um, some PDF input in Joe. Then the primary problem there is that uh, this is not available in all builds. In case you are focusing on MPL subset builds, then this is just not there. We have some quite hard to read boost based uh, parser, which is, as I understand it, mostly used just for hybrid PDF so that um, uh, you can get back your original writer or calc or impress document. Um, from some PDF file, but in case you have no LibreOffice around, you still have the PDF data there. And um, I checked what's uh, the um, situation with PDF Hume, but at least back then it had no API to extract all the signature details, which is uh, needed by us. So we needed some solution where we can just build the missing piece ourselves. So I went ahead and I did the first PDF tokenizer, but this one is really just tokenizing the PDF data. It's not really parsing what's in the object streams, which is probably the harder part of the whole PDF parsing. And um, the basic verification is not that complicated. Uh, we need to determine where is this signature inside the PDF file and just have hash everything before and after that. And um, um, determine if the digest is matching or not. Uh, but then, um, of course, uh, you can make things more complicated. 
uh, you can have uh, multiple signatures in a PDF file and these signatures are, are changed by definition so the second signature is always including the first signature as data which means that previously I mentioned we want to have a, com um, a signature which is covering the complete document so uh, if signature is partial then we consider that as a failure and for PDF you can't really do this because then technically uh, everything except the last signature will be um, partial. So we do some middle ground there. We try to find out if um, actually the first signature is partial only because there is a second signature added or perhaps there is some inserted con content between the signatures uh, inserted by some attacker. And in that case, the, the first signature will be partial. So that's a bit complicated and it's a bit sad that uh, these hacks are um, required for real-world uh, multiple uh, signature usage in the PDF format. So once you can verify a PDF signature, then of course you want to uh, create um, PDF signatures. And I, I said um, creating new PDF files with signatures in them that was already supported, but then um, you can also take existing PDF files and perhaps the user says, "I just want to sign this." So. This is not working, but uh, all, all combinations of um, LibreOffice creating PDF files, Adobe Acrobat uh, creating uh, PDF files, and then creating the initial signature, um, then second and third signatures, and uh, swapping between the two softwares. So that's that's lots of combinations. But um, at the I believe now this is working nicely. Um, the the hard part is really that um, we are expected to parse random PDF files and this is a much larger, much richer markup compared to just the subset that um, we are producing in our PDF export. And previously it was um, only necessary to parse uh, what's, uh, um, what's produced by, uh, by our own exporter. Then uh, one thing you can do on top of existing uh, XML signing and um, PDF signing is that um, there is a set of recommendations uh, on top of the XMID uh, SIG um, recommendation or on top of the PDF spec um, that this XADAS and PADAS um, signing um, which has the promise that in case all conditions are met then this can result in a signing which is actually legally binding uh, which makes it very much interesting. Uh, so um, we had a checklist of uh, what's, uh, what's obviously missing from LibreOffice uh, to create such, such signatures. Um, one thing was that um, the SHA-256 uh, support um, as a um, digesting algorithm was uh, missing and now it's possible to do that. Um, also uh, just RSA was supported, so uh, ECDSA support was added. And um, one um, very important piece is that um, uh, you have to make sure that um, not only um, the a certain private key was created was used to create a signature but also what was the original signature because uh, like there is a trap here you can have the same private key in multiple signatures but actually multiple certificates but actually the certificate contains your name and your other details so as a as an end user you want to have some signature which uh, actually ensures that uh, this certificate was used for signing and the original digital signing is actually not providing this. Um, and uh, the bottom line here is that um, when this was this work was finished then um, there is um, some DSS digital um, signatures service validator um, which can um, check if you are confirming to different um, baselines of this um, uh, PADAS uh, standard and uh, we are passing the basic checks there you get a nice green check mark. Um, and the use uh, this year is that um, in case you are doing um, um, signing of existing PDF files then, um, then um, um, so far we were signing some kind of stub signature widget 
yeah, which was on the first page zero size top left corner and now we can actually create some some visible signature widget which is uh, semantically associated with the uh, with um, the actual digital signature uh, so you get um, a user interface which is quite similar to existing signature lines in in writer or or impress um, and um, and um, draw your your signature rectangle somewhere you get a nice vector graphic there um, use the correct PDF markup and um, once you you were you drawn some uh, rectangle you can fine-tune that in case the size or the position is exactly what you want and then you actually do the digital signing uh, and as a combination of these um, I believe currently this is a bit better than what you get from DocuSign or Adobe Acrobat uh, so that sounds pretty nice. The question is like, in case you are more interested in the technical details, how, how all of these features are actually implemented. So one thing um, that um, we added was signature descriptions. Um, OXML and PDF already has markup for this and we were losing this data. Um, you can also refer to these signature commands or signature reasons. Um, I had an entire blog was dedicated for this. It's on the slide. Uh, you can click on that in case you are interested in even more details. The point is that this way it makes sense to have the same signature for um, same signing certificate in multiple signatures because in the description you can actually state what's the reason of your signature. Uh, signing and perhaps you want to first state um, reason A and re uh, later reason B and then um, use the same signing certificate for the same document multiple times. Uh, you can um, also do the import of the signatures from OXMO. Um, as mentioned this uh, required um, the, this impl uh, an implementation of the uh, relation tra tra relationship transform algorithm that was a bit tricky because the ECMO version and the ISO version of this algorithm is actually different and um, I believe there was a bug in the ECMO version so if you implement the ISO version then you will get the same uh, result that um, what Microsoft Office has. Um, there is a small SACS parser in, the, in XML security to actually read this OXML signature and um, this was the first case where we are still uh, we were still just supporting zip based um, formats like OXML and ODF but it, there is no longer a hard coded saying saying if this is not ODF then it's impossible to digitally sign this format um, then once uh, you could import and verify those signatures you per perhaps want to add your own ones uh, so in the OXML case, each new signature is a new XML uh, stream in the zip package. Um, so that's somewhat nice because you can't easily break existing signatures or actually it's harder to do that by accident. On the other hand, um, it requires some bookkeeping on how these signatures are referenced and so on. Um, also some um, some refactoring was done here so that most of the signing logic is moved outside the dialog so that it can be triggered from CPP unit tests. Um, regarding the verification of existing PDF signatures, um, uh, this is just happening uh, automatically when you are opening some PDF file and um, we have some UI where you can actually uh, try to discourage users from editing the file uh, in case it has signatures because in case you are editing the file then you will lose your signatures. Um, adding PADA support um, require basically improvements to the uh, hashing and encryption algorithms that we support and um, also there is some uh, spec on exactly how to uh, embed this um, uh, signing certificate to the existing binary signature and if you implement that then at the end you get this nice uh, green check mark from the DSS validator. Um, there was a separate tab for this um, exactly uh, the SHA-256 and the ECDSA support. Um, I was personally interested in that because of um, um, there is some um, uh, Hungarian electronic ID, you can that as Hungarian citizen since there is a sign, signing certificate on that and 
if you get some uh, certificate reader then you can actually use this for signing and this is recognized by the government and whatnot so some real hardware based signing um, and now this is working on on windows and linux and um, what was really comp uh, challenging there is that um, ECDSA support is uh, not um, working in this older Windows API that we were using for encryption and hashing. So um, I know we wrote that part to use the Microsoft uh, cryptography next generation, this CNG API, and that's working nicely. Um, and the last piece was this visible PDF signing where uh, I tried hard to reuse existing code. So uh, this is very similar to signature lines in um, what you may know already from Brighter and Cog. Um, the generated um, uh, signature, visible signature object is um, actually reusing the existing export uh, shape to PDF functionality. So it's nice vector based and um, also um, then we are copying this pdf object from that shape pdf to the final pdf using code which is uh, reused from um, the insert pdf image functionality um, last um, as always um, don't forget that collabora is an open source company so what we do and share with the community has to be always paid by somebody and in this case the Dutch Ministry of Defense in cooperation with Noun and of um, a small Dutch company uh, made this work by Collabora possible um, the majority of the functionality presented in this call was paid by them so a huge thanks to them uh, this is a great feature set and it was possible due to them so as a summary the good news is that compared to the original OpenOffice.org feature set, we support these Xodas and Podas um, uh, extensions to the um, baseline spark. We support modern hashing and algorithm algorithms. Uh, you can sign not only audio but OXM and PDF files. Um, this is working nicely to the matching products like Microsoft Office and Acrobat files. And um, the news this year was these visible PDF signatures. Uh, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.